Do you want to make your stereo sound better, but have no regard for your own personal information? Do you enjoy your phone number being sold to hundreds and thousands of different companies? Then Timu is the place for you. Stick around, because I cover three different amplifiers, ranging from £2.48 all the way up to £14.98. No expense was spared on this video, as you can tell. I suppose we ought to unpack them, really. I'm not annoyed at how they're packaged. Total weight of all four amps that's in here, um, it's two of the same, it is about nothing, so that's good. <laughs> oh, that must be the big one. Two small ones, a big one, and one they couldn't even be bothered to put in a white bag. Love, love that. Let's start with these two. These two, I bought two of them because they were £2.48 each. This is the 30 watt plus 30 watt 2.0 channel digital stereo audio power amplifier board dash TPA 3110XH-A232-DC 8.26 volt 3 amp C6 owed oh, something, I don't know, it doesn't seem to end. Are you ready for a 2x30 watt amp? There you go. There you have it. Look at the unbelievable size. Sixty watts, ladies and gentlemen. So nine tenths of the board is all heatsink. Obviously, we've got capacitors all around the outside. Given that these are so close to the outputs, I'd say these were inductors. And then a whole bunch of what look like capacitors, but I can't see any MOSFETs on it anywhere. So I'm not really sure how that's gonna go down. I think my favorite bit is how you're meant to get a signal into it, because obviously I'm guessing that this is the holes for the RCAs. Right, I'll be back in a minute. I've just got to solder loads of things to it. Okay, so first things first, operational voltage is apparently eight. We're at zero. Well, we've got a little blue LED, just here. Three volts. The jump and amperage is because my head unit's just come on. Hey, so we should be able to wham this all the way up to 15, 15 volts. Stays on. Can we get a sine wave out of it? We are now feeding this tiny little board, a 40 hertz tone through YouTube, 15 volts. We are immediately on, where's my probe? Down there. What do you reckon the odds are this is gonna give us a signal? It should come up here with a nice little wave now, oh, 16.25 volts on a square wave. Let's bring that down a little bit so it's a nice rounded, very, very light clip there at 16.88 volts. Now this one says it was a stereo audio power amplifier. So let's hook it up to some stereo audio speakers and see just how great it doesn't sound because there's no op amp board or anything. But for a boombox, it might be all right. I don't really know if this has any place in a car necessarily, but um, you know. Okay, we're gonna switch the handheld vibe. So, RCA's ground shield in the middle, positive, negative, two speakers, very old, probably quite crackly. Just gonna see if they actually work. Listen to some copyright free music in the hope that YouTube doesn't try and take this down. 
and then afterwards we'll listen to some definitely copyright free stuff to make sure they don't take it down so voltage down just in case of explosions got our little pardon Operates at 8 volts. I'll tell you what. Increase in voltage makes a big difference. At under one amp, at full power, that's quite impressive. Okay, the sound wasn't the greatest. They weren't, they're not in a box, they are rattling round. The speakers I've had for about a decade and they're full of sawdust, so it wasn't going to be good. But what, look, I just for it's the size for perspective of three fingers, not even down to the, the end of your three fingers. That's unreal for like a little boom boxy kind of project. I mean, I'm going to call this one a win. Does it have a place in car audio? No, because it's not really any more powerful than a head unit. But if you're going to make a little boombox project, rather than trying to stuff one of these into something, stuff one of these in. Look at the... It's a no-brainer. And for the... I'm probably being funny. What was that? Two pound... Two pound 48. Put fucking 12 of them in. <laughs> on to the next one. Let's have a cheeky look. What one do we go for? That one's heavier, so we'll do that one last. That one. Got another clear package. This one's got a wire with it. What do we have here then? Okay, so what we have here is the 120 watt plus 120 watt two channel stereo high power digital audio power amplifier board. Boost your audio output now. £8.98. Also reckons it's got 12 to 26 volts operational at 12 volt to 2 by 50 watt. At 24 volt, it does 2 by 120 watt. Now, remember the little board, wherever it's gone. What the hell have I done with that? So small, I've lost the bloody thing. Remember, the little board was 2 by 30 watt. This is apparently 2 by 50 watt. Looks like very much the same as before. RCAs are going to go in here, but this time we've got a nice, fancy, schmancy lead. So you've got... Uh, in left, in right, and then your RCA ground will attach to this lead here. We've also got potentiometers, which is nice. You've got your volume potentiometer, oh, for each channel. So that's actually kind of nice. I don't know why you'd want different for each channel, but, you know, it's there, and we'll take it as a feature. Let's wire it in. Let's turn this thing on. Let's see if before, do we get another blue light? We do seem to. 7.6 volts. 15.3 volts, seems to be okay. Let's feed it a signal. Now, I can't remember, because it was about two hours ago in real lifetime, 
but I'll put on the screen now somewhere over here uh, how many volts were on the little 30 watt amp. Where's the terminal? There. There's a positive. Oh, it's a bit square. Let's uh, see if we can't tidy that up a little bit. So on a square wave, we've got 17, 16, 17, 18, a fluctuating amount of voltage. To get it clean, oh my God, look at the drop there. Although that said, I don't know what the little gain, these little gain knobs, what are they doing? Oh, it doesn't like being touched, does it? We can flatten it out. Or we don't get a nice wave at any point. Not. Is it because I'm touching the bottom of the board? Hang on. Let me just... Let me just not touch it at all. No, that still looks like absolute shit. Oh, it's a very... It's a very mountainous peak, isn't it? There you go. At five volts, we get a clean wave. This is a very poorly made board. Guess we better see how it plays music then. See if that sounds like utter shit. Oh, there's more kick. Well, that sounds god awful, as was demonstrated by the signal that comes through the scope. So um, don't buy this one; it's a piece of shit. That brings us to the final, the final amp we have of the day. This bad boy. Oh, and you are in for a treat. This right here is none other than the fabled, the mysterious, the thing of legends. It is difficult to get into. This is the 50 watt stereo 100 mono TPA 3116D2 2 slash 1 channel D class digital power amplifier module DIY speaker 1224 volt DC. It was 4 to 8 ohms, it was 1498, and you'll see this comes with actual gain knobs. Unbelievable. Not only that, inside our handy little thing, we've got we've got knobs. Look at that! Look at that. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're horribly cheap plastic, but all the same. So let's have a quick conversation about this phenomenon worth £14.98. First of all, glitzy gain knobs. Wibbly wibbly, fuck yes. We've got a sub output of 100 watts and then two speaker outputs of 50 watts each, allegedly. Sub output, they're all 4 or 8 ohm. Yeah, we've got a phono input, 3.5mm jack, sorry. Connector. We've got a DC power supply connector. So if you've got one of them plugs, then just plug this bad boy straight into a wall and you are away. If you don't want to do that, we've got these for the bench. So we're gonna wire the 12 volt into here. And this is this is it. I'm excited about this one. I hope it gives us some half decent signal because this is this holds promise. This does actually hold some promise with the old widdly widdlies. Can't wait for that. One thing I will say is that the diagram doesn't actually tell you what these do. I can only really assume that they're for, for each channel. You know, logically, it would kind of make sense. But this is from Timu, so possibly not. I shall wire this in and be back with you in just a second. Okay. Do we have life? And do we have any funky coloured knobs? Funky coloured knobs? <laughs> oh, if you've got a funky coloured knob, go to the doctor. Any funky colour LEDs? Always nervous when I first turn them on in case they go bang in my hand or on my face. We've got a little blue LED. We are alive. 15 volts. Appears stable. Lovely. Let's throw a signal in. Right, signal check. 
I've turned all the potentiometers up full, so we might be in clip. I don't know really what they do. So we're at 0.048 amps on idle. Um, I've turned all the potentiometers up to absolute max, so it might be clippy as crap on this thing, but let's find out quickly which one's the positive. I can't read Chinese, that one. Oh, that's not a good sign. Oh, didn't press start. Squarey. Lovely job. Let's just calm that down a touch. Okay, so so far the potentiometers appear to have absolutely nothing to do with the size of the... I've got no idea what they do. Right, uh, okay, so the one on the right appears to be master for all channels. And then you've got just sub or just mid. That's kind of cool. I don't mind that. Let's plug it into some speakers and see what it does. But just for reference, the rail voltage on the sub channel, which is beautifully clean, by the way. Very impressed with that. Is 15 volts. Rail voltage clean on the stereo channel is 11.8 volts on one and 11.8 volts on the other. Perfectly fine with that. The reason you're not seeing the bottom half of this wave is that these amps only work on positive rail. And that's that's normal. That's it's actually very common with these smaller type boards. Um, so it's nothing to worry about. Yeah, okay, so that's the overall one. Just the sub. Oh no, that's just bass. That takes out treble. Okay, so it's treble bass volume nothing tells you this so we'll balance them both at flat out switch to some I don't know go back to EDM you know what wow I'll tell you what, it's not that loud, but that is clean. Obviously, I'm pretty sure this would benefit quite heavily from a some sort of you know passive crossover um, because it looks as though the signal that comes in is just fed to kind of everything, and you're left to figure out between bass and treble, which unfortunately does it for all of the things rather than anything in particular. And there's no individual knobs on here to tell you to do anything different, like to, to control things individually. Um, so, I think with a with a crossover in between, you might be onto something here. Let's. I'm going to play something now that's probably, it's, it's, a, it's like a bass remixed version of a song. Um, I'm going to have to edit it quite heavily, obviously because of copyright purposes, because for some reason YouTube doesn't want me to use other people's stuff to make money. So, you know, play three seconds and then cut it off. And edit. So yeah, 100%. I don't think these channels, the stereo channels, are actually, what does it say it was? 50 watt. Yeah, 50 watt. They're definitely not 50 watt. That seems a bit optimistic. The sub channel, about 100 watt seems right for the amount of oomph we're getting out of this. Now, these are 4 ohm speakers, I believe. So, unless they go down to 2 ohm, I wouldn't have thought, no, 4 to, 4 to 8 ohm. But it does say 12 to 24 volts, so it wouldn't surprise me if this was 50 watt um, at 24 volts. That said... So 
it's a recap. We looked at three boards today. This, the 2x30 watt that absolutely blew me away given that it can literally fit in your mouth. Uh, the 120 watt by 120 watt, which honestly, total piece of shit, don't buy it. And this monster 50 watt stereo 100 watt sub output thing, which is actually quite a bit of a beast as it turns out. Good on the sub channels, not so hot however on the stereo channels, but I think with a bit of crossing over you could probably get it to sound quite good. Um, so there you have it. Your best value for money out of all of these has got to be your £2.48 30 watt by 2 channel soldering pain in the arse to put together no MOSFET but actually works really well kind of little board here that fits in your mouth because for some reason I thought that was going to be a good idea. So what should we do next? I guess the next thing we could possibly do is actually build a little box to see whether or not this thing actually works out and about. I mean, you can get 12 volt power supplies pretty bloody cheap now. I've, I've got enough wood to make a box for a, for a pair of speakers like these, for example, and walk around with them. What do you reckon? I think we should throw a number out there. 200. Give me 200 likes. Give me 200 likes and we'll end up doing that. That sounds like a reasonable thing. Drop a comment. What did you think? Is it a good video? Should I buy more Timu stuff and sell more of my soul to the internet and random companies that are going to ring me and be like, hello, your auto contract has expired. I'm with EE. I don't use O2, but that's fine, mate. Thank you, David. Show me some love. Show me some likes. And I'll show you more of what you like. I've turned into a magician. Not really sure why. What's this bit? What's, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like, comment subscribe because if you don't do that then i'll cry myself asleep thanks